Australia is looking to outlaw anyone under the age of 16 from using Facebook, X, Instagram, Snapchat and TikTok. Social media has a social responsibility. We know they can and should do better to address harms on their platforms. That's why we're making big changes to hold platforms to account for user safety. The proposed social media ban was tabled earlier this week in Australia's parliament. The government says it aims to protect children from harmful content online. It comes in the wake of several high-profile cases in Australia involving children as young as 12 who took their own lives after their parents said they were being bullied online. We have strong regulatory frameworks like the Privacy Act and the Digital Identity Act that exist and are coming into force. I think the key is how do we apply those in a in a way that protects young people online, protects everybody across social media interactions. The bill is expected to go to a vote as early as next week. If the legislation is passed into law, social media companies will have one year to figure out how to prevent Australian kids from having accounts. There are plenty of details still yet to be ironed out, but let's unpack this with technology analyst Carmi Levy. Uh, Carmi, thanks so much for making time for us this, after, or this morning still. <laughs> Great to be with you, Jacqueline. Thanks for having me. So, Carmi, on top of being a technology analyst, you're also a parent. What do you think of this proposed ban? I mean, you know, like every Canadian, I have seen the spread of toxicity, of cyber stalking, of just all the, the harms that are being caused, not only to uh, all demographics, but particularly to kids. And as a parent, that's been my biggest worry. How do I keep my kids safe in the digital space? And so obviously, I think, you know, we all want governments to figure out how to help us navigate these treacherous waters. What kinds of laws should we be putting in place to keep our kids safer and just as importantly make sure that the companies that are providing these these tools these platforms these apps behave in a responsible manner because as a parent it's pretty clear that hasn't been the case up until now so i think we all want better protection i think the question then comes down to what kind of protection makes the most sense mm -hmm. is a blanket ban of these services really the answer or is it just giving us false hope and so to to answer that i i wonder if we we need to talk about how it would work because um, would it work it, it is a big question, right? Could kids still get their hands on a social media account if they figured out a way around whatever rules are, are put into place? How do you think these companies will approach this? Well, I mean, they can use any number of technologies, but I can say as a parent of three very tech savvy kids, the instant that you tell a child that they cannot do something, that is almost an invitation for them to do something. And so it's pretty clear that kids have the upper hand here. You have a government that is telling technology companies, make sure that anyone 16 and under doesn't use these tools. Uh, kids will figure out ways around it in an absolute heartbeat to enforce something like this on a national national scale has never been done before in the world. Pakistan has banned uh, a, a number of social media apps, particularly Facebook and Instagram. But even then, uh, you know, we've already seen that it, that that regime leaks like a sieve. There's huge amounts of activity on these platforms in that country. So uh, exactly what that how looks like, I have no idea. And these companies still don't have an answer. They'll have a year to figure it out. I'm not hopeful. The government says that there would be fines for uh, social media companies that allowed kids to uh, participate in their platforms who were under the age of 16. So $45 million in Canadian if, if they were to break the rules. Um, at least that's in the, the, the draft proposed plan here. Is, is that enough of, of a penalty for these giant companies to figure this out? I don't think that number is big enough to even make these companies blink, Jacqueline. I think they would write the check, send it in, and then go back to doing what they were doing before. It's not big enough to be a deterrent. Uh, just for comparison's sake, uh, Meta, the Meta 
pulled in $185 million, billion dollars in revenue last year. So $45 million is a drop in the bucket, not enough to really deter the kinds of behaviors that we need uh, to, to change. Uh, and so the European Union has a very different approach to, uh, to penalties. They tie it to a percentage of revenue. Uh, some of their laws have upwards of 6% of global revenues if you do not comply. That's a punishment that will have these tech companies sit up and take notice. $45 million they won't even blink. Uh, let's come back to the kids here, Carmi. I mean, you talk about your kids being tech savvy. So many are, uh, even if they are under the age of 16. But could this get in the way of, of kids becoming tech savvy, of, of growing up with um, the media that will become or the, the, the platforms and the, the technology that will become a bigger part of their lives if they're not able to use it under the age of 16, is, is there a risk there? I think there's a huge risk, Jacqueline, because imagine if you have no exposure to any of these technologies for much of your upbringing, and then suddenly at the age of 16, it all gets magically flipped on. The ban is over. You're now of age. Let's go. Uh, and of course, at that point, that's where we see problems because these kids haven't had a chance to build the proper digital skills they the, to understand what the best practices are, to gradually kind of work them through with their parents, with their educators, with their peers. Uh, and so that by the time they get to the age of 16, they're already ready for, for that sort of, you know, sort of the, the digital tough streets uh, out there. And so, uh, you know, I've never been a big believer in bands because they are so binary. It's black and white off and on. And as a parent, you start fairly early introducing these things gradually. Who knows better than mom, dad, or a caregiver? Uh, and a band like this just absolutely wipes that away. And it puts kids at risk when they finally reach the age where they can use these tools. Yeah, with, with safety at, at the heart of this, though, I mean, you wonder if it, it's worth taking a chance to to try it to see if maybe you know it, it will help some people and maybe they don't have a, a guide that um, is helping them through using social media as um, some kids do um, what do you think Canada should be watching for with this proposed ban in Australia if, the, if it is passed and they go through with it um, wh what do you think we should watch for people policymakers in this country should be uh, you know tracking to see if maybe it's something Canada should try too uh, just like we saw with the Online News Act, where Australia was an early adopter and then Canada used that experience to craft its own legislation, we should do the same here. Look to the Australian experience, look to that law, and maybe start drafting a framework that follows that lead. But more importantly, look to how it landed. In other words, how did the tech companies respond and negotiate in Australia? What technologies and best practices did they put in place? What, uh, you know, what did it look like on the ground? And then make sure that our laws respect that so that we don't run into some of the problems we've had with other tech-centric legislations. Also make sure that from a privacy and a cybersecurity perspective uh, that our privacy commissioner and other resources are a part of the process right from the beginning, that we don't tack on privacy afterward because a regime like this will create huge repositories of information to authenticate kids, and that makes them a really huge target for cyber crime. And so we don't want that same thing here in Canada. If Australia has any issues with it, we want to make sure that we're prepared too. Okay, well, we will be watching, Carmine. We know you will be as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Always great to chat with you. Appreciate being here. Thanks so much, Jacqueline. That's Carmi Levy. He's a technology analyst in London, Ontario.